This chapter is called Margie's Puzzling Question. Dick looked up at the clock and snapped his book shut. It's story time, he announced. Dick and Margie were very fortunate to belong to a family who did things together. Not only did they go to church together, but each evening they had stories, Bible study, and bedtime prayers together, too. It was so much more cozy than to be sent off to bed and be told to say your prayers all by yourself, as some children have to do. When evening prayer time came, Margie thought of her friends again. Poor Cindy and Jean and Tommy, and the two littlest ones. No mother to help them say their prayers tonight. No one to tuck them in bed and give them a good night kiss. She remembered again what she had heard the woman say. She thought about it so hard that she did not hear the story her father was reading from the Bible. She began to feel all choked up inside once more. Suddenly she burst out. It isn't fair, she cried. It just isn't fair. Everyone looked up shocked and stared at Margie. What in the world could she be talking about? And to interrupt like that when Daddy was reading their Bible story. Well, it just wasn't like Margie to act that way. Something must be wrong. Finally, Mother managed to speak. What's the trouble, dear? She asked quietly. What isn't fair? Margie swallowed hard and blinked back her tears. It just isn't fair for God to let mothers die when their children need them. Why would God let Mrs. Johnson die? Mother and Daddy looked at each other. They didn't know what to say. After a few minutes, Mother broke the silence. Daddy, suppose you take Dick to bed, and Margie and I will sit here for a while. When they were alone, Mother motioned for Margie to come and sit beside her. Margie curled up in her arms and felt so thankful that she still had a mother to love her. For a long time, they sat thinking how wonderful it was to have each other and to be together. Finally, Mother asked softly, Margie, would you like to talk about what is troubling you? Margie slowly sat up. I don't know, Mother. I don't know if you would understand. Maybe I wouldn't, but I'd like to try. Sometimes things, there are things that none of us can understand, not even we grown-up people. But somehow it usually helps a lot if we can talk things over with somebody, especially if it's somebody who cares about us. Well, Margie began, you know Mrs. Osborne, she talks so loud and you can hear her all over the place. Well, Margie hesitated. That's all right, dear, Mother encouraged. Just go on. You know you can trust me to try to understand. Well then, <clears throat> Mrs. Auburn, Osborne said that she could not understand why Guy would take away the mother from little children. It's kind of, it kind of scared me at first to hear her say that, for it seemed wicked to say something against God. You always told us that God is good and that what he does is best. But when I heard Mrs. Osborne say that, I wasn't sure what to think. I guess I just got kind of mixed up. Yes, I know. I know, said Mother loudly, or kindly. When we don't understand things, it's easy to get mixed up, even for grown folk. Then she began to smile. Do you remember when you were a little girl how badly you wanted to play with a knife? I tried to explain how it could hurt you, but you wouldn't believe me. Margie smiled a little too as she remembered what happened. One day you got hold of a knife and I took it away from you and spanked you hard. Margie made a wry face. I haven't forgotten how it hurt. And have you forgotten how you felt? Just when you considered me about the meanest person in the world, didn't you? Margie looked at the toe of her shoe and felt half ashamed. Yes, I decided you didn't really love me at all and wouldn't let me have what I wanted to make me happy. And what next? I got hold of the knife one day and cut myself. Then I had to remind you that I was not being mean when I spanked you. I did it because I loved you and did not want you to hurt yourself. But you could not understand that then. No, 
I had to cut myself to find out why I couldn't play with knives. Now maybe you can see why we should still trust God, even when he lets some very sad things happen. We don't know why he lets such things happen, but he says he loves us just as a father loves his children. And if we will only trust him and obey someday when we get to heaven, he will explain it all to us. Is that what the preacher meant today when he said someday we would understand? Yes, that is exactly what he meant. And now, oh dear, see what time it is? And you have to get up for school in the morning. When Margie knelt by her bed, she thanked God for her loving mother and father. She also asked God to help her find ways to make her friends Cindy and Jean feel better about losing their mother. And the next chapter is Grandpa's Invitation.